Good morning, everybody. Can you hear, can you look at my slide in the full uh, screen? Yes, yes. it is. Sorry. It's a full screen because I yes. don't see it. Okay. It's full, okay, because I see it in, in part of the screen, sorry. Thank you so much. Uh, it is my pleasure to uh, to uh, to join this meeting. And it's early morning here in Israel. And thank you for the organizing committee and Dr. Banchi Sabo for inviting me. Uh, this is my disclosure slide. Um, just... Okay, I hope that you see because I don't see so much the, the slides. My talk today is about the clinical uses of artificial intelligence based decision support system. I'm going to start with what do we mean by artificial intelligence based decision support system? Why do we need it in the world of diabetes? Talk a bit, a uh, little bit about the available artificial intelligence based decision support this system. Does it work for healthcare provider and people with diabetes? And we'll end with a glimpse into the future of AI in diabetes. So let's start. Clinical decision support system, what does it mean? In brief, it's a system that uses tools that make sense out of data and support informed decision making. Today, we have a lot of data related to diabetes treatment that can be easily collected. We have uploads from CGM, from PUMP. This abundant valuable data must be linked to system that can process and analyze the data to provide actionable therapeutic recommendation. Therefore, decision support system have the potential to improve clinical outcome and may increase access to care, enhancing utilization of healthcare resources by integrating e-health and telemonitoring program, and particularly important in the uh, perspective of, pers uh, of precision medicine. And what is artificial intelligence is the tool that can analyze this amount of data. It's a smart machine or computers that capable of performing tasks requiring human intelligence like learning and problem solving. So can we do without a, cl a clinical decision support system? Yes, we can do it in the old way. We can analyze the data in an old way, just like navigating with a map, because we can use plenty of general consensus statements and guidelines that are there, how to treat people with diabetes, how to support diabetes care. And are we successful with that? So the quality of care for people with diabetes is not getting better. But even worse, data published just last year in the New England showed that in the last decade, only one in four adults meet all the three ADA recommendations for care. And less than half achieved the target glycemic control with even less success, as you can see, among insulin-treated people. So something is not working and we need to find new ways and strategies to tackle diabetes. Uh, and for that, the ADA, the American Diabetes Re Organization, recognized the gap in current practice and the need for new ways and strategies to improve the quality of care. For that, you can see here in this slide, this ADA practice framework was issued and recommended integrating decision support system into the workflow to support providers in clinical decision making and treatment adjustment and people with diabetes for self-management. And you can see also that other diabetes association advocate the use of apps and digital tools and decision support system like the American Association of Clinical Endocrinology, the ISPA, the ESD. So can we do without a decision support system? Like we said, yes, but we probably can do better with using decision support system, just like the ways enable us a more effective driving instructions, like to choose the short way or the way without traffic. 
and a wide range of decision support system and diabetes application are available to support almost all aspects of diabetes management and treatment from physical activity, nutrition, training, and physical examination up to system for calculating insulin delivery, how much insulin to deliver. And I classified all this decision support system into four main categories. First, tools that support people with diabetes for self-management, tools for diagnosis, screening and prevention, uh, mainly diabetes for diabetes complication, prediction tools like uh, models for new onset diabetes prediction and prediction of hypoglycemia, and, and the last category are tools for clinical management support for insulin dose adjustment and inpatient treatment algorithms. In the upcoming slide, I will give some example of decision support system that are there in use. Um, and this is a, a nice study from 2007 that showed nicely that different people have different postprandial excursions after consuming the same piece of bread, as you can see here in the illustration, demonstrating the need for personalized nutrition recommendation. And today there are apps for self-management tool that use different ways to predict individual postprandial responses. This can be based on CGM data, wearable sensor, microbiome, and body composition analysis. And I, I brought one example that I like is the under under my fork app that combine glucose data with photo based food logging. People are asked to take photos of meals. We all do it nowadays. And the app automatically recognize and tag the foods. The app sort meal into green, into uh, amber and red and categories based on the two hours postprandial time in range. And this data from previous meal may help with decision on what to eat in the future and how much insulin to give in future when you eat the same or similar meals. And this data can also be shared with the healthcare provider. Another tool is for uh, physical activity because one of the barriers for physical activity is the challenge that it possesses for people with type 1D. And decision support system can provide physical activity support. The general idea is to take data on glucose, insulin, nutrition, and connect it to fitness data like Fitbit or Apple Watch, analyze and provide personalized advice to support physical activity. For example, the Diabetes app that predicts future glucose level using a machine learning algorithm. It's case studies algorithm that learn from the past how glucose level will be in the next time doing the same exercise. So treatment can be adjusted. And decision support system are also available for exploring diabetes related complication. On the left, you can see uh, FDA approved software that uses artificial intelligence to analyze images of the eye taken with retinal camera and detect diabetes retinopathy, no need for ophthalmology. And um, it is done automatically. So it can be a great tool for screening in clinics, in rural areas. And there is also apps um, and other mobile apps that called FootSnap, as the name indicated, a software for longitudinal follow-up of feet by images of the feet of people with diabetes for early detection of pathology such as ulceration. And we also have several prediction tools that are being developed using big data in machine learning for precision medicine. There are plenty of ideas that we don't have time, but I got us some of example, like um, looking on data and seeing that different people respond differently to rapid insulin injection, uh, prediction of uh, how people will react to immunotherapy, 
uh, analyze data to detect people with uh, prediabetes in primary care settings for early intervention and treatment and so on. So hopefully I convince you that one treatment doesn't fit all. Technology should be personalized, targeted and suited to individual need. And this can be done with decision support system. And for the question, can a software provide better patient care? Uh, there are several randomized control studies shown in this uh, table that showed better glycemic control when using these decision support tools as reducing hemoglobin A1C. And the abundant, like we talked before, the abundance of insulin and glucose data uploads, like we see all the data that we have from sensors, from pump and so on, can provide really important insight into the management of diabetes. But we need to find them in the huge amount of data. And this takes time, effort, and knowledge that does not always exist. An artificial intelligence based decision support system can provide a comprehensive data analysis within a split of a second. Such an automated decision support system is the Endo Digital. It's a cloud based system that utilizes glucose, insulin, and other data uploaded from the various diabetes management devices. It uses artificial intelligence to analyze the data, deliver structural visualization of the data, and suggest treatment adjustment uh, for pump therapy and also for multiple daily index injections, both for type 1 and type 2, as well as personalized diabetes behavioral recommendations, all within a split of a second. The user receives the treatment plans and behavioral recommendations from the smartphone app. After approval by the provider, this decision support system is intended for use by healthcare provider. So this is how does it work? First, the provider enters the population uh, tracker, find the uh, patient and ask for a new recommendation with a click. And within a split of a second, you can see it here, it gets recommendation how to exactly uh, adjust insulin doses. Here is the first page is for the basal. You can see in bold the, uh, the recommendations. The provider can edit the data and uh, look for the data in the, uh, in the um, bottom of the page. You can see here there is the AGP in the bottom. There is a logbook that you can see all the data and the daily uh, data. It's all to simplify the provider review process. Then go into the carbohydrate ratio in the same way as you can see here. And then next to the correction factor. In, in right, you can see the a recommendation. Looking again for the data. Once the provider, the healthcare provider approves <coughs> the data, you have the final report to look at it, to write comments, and then by clicking approve and share, it is sent directly to the patient. So it can see the recommendation for changing in insulin dosing. Doctor Umesh, sir, yeah. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> sorry, um, we, we can continue. Yeah. Um, and a decision support system that you can seek should provide comparable 
quality of treatment as an expert physician would, wasn't it? This was demonstrated for our system, the EndoDigital, in several service study, which have shown that recommendations generated by the system automatically were similar to those of experienced physician for the same set of data. The next step was a multi-center. We conducted a multi-center, multinational perspective randomized study that also demonstrate non-inferiority in glycemic outcome between the arm that was treated by expert physician and the arm that was treated with the algorithm, the endodigital. And we also uh, have some early data of the, of the effectiveness of the system in real world use that I will present. So first for the uh, degree of agreement, you can see the results of the first survey of pump user. <clears throat> we gave 26 experts the same set of patient data and asked them to give insulin dose recommendation. As you can see, the level of agreement between physician uh, in red was around 45% for the basal rate, CR and CF. It was similar to the level of agreement between the endodigital recommendation and the physician for the same patient set of data. You can see it in blue. And we did the same survey, giving this uh, same data for uh, expert, uh, for people with uh, that using MDI, either type one and type two. And you can also see that the level of agreement between physician in the upper panel was similar to those between the physicians and the artificial intelligence based decision support system. So we can conclude and say that, that the decision, automatic decision support system, the endo digital, is just like another team uh, to consult with, another member in our uh, healthcare provider team. And this is uh, exact medicine is not an exact science. Therefore, it is acceptable and encouraged to consult and ask for a second opinion. Uh, and this is always happens in Gray's Anatomy, uh, but also needed for the single doctor participating in his or her own clinic uh, with no one to consult with. An artificial intelligence based decision support system can be his or her consultant. I'll show you now the, uh, the uh, outcomes of the multicenter multinational study that we conducted uh, that, uh, that included seven uh, centers of excellence in diabetes care around in the US and in Europe. We had 108 young people age average of 15, 16 years with baseline A1C of 8.4 and after you can see here the study uh, the study out the study overview after a three weeks uh, running period eligible participants were randomly assigned to participate either at the advisor giving advice were given advice by the decision support uh, system or by the physician arm Every three weeks, participants upload their pump data in CGM from home and receive insulin dose adjustment recommendation. And here are the, uh, the outcomes. After six months, glucose control was found to be similar between the two arms, the one that received insulin dose adjustment by a machine, by the decision support system, or by expert physician with 20 years of expertise in diabetes. So a similar reduction in glycemic hemoglobin was observed between baseline. You can see here, it was significant only in the decision support arm. Does decision support system has the potential to automatically re recommend insulin dose adjustment while matching the current safety and efficacy standard of care provided by experienced physician? And we can say that great minds think alike and the study outcome provide evidence that an algorithm can be fed with human intelligence and get similar results. 
In this slide, you can see uh, the reports for the uh, MDI uh, page and the app for MDI that has a diary and a bolus calculator. And I just want to give a glimpse for the diabetes behavioral recommendations. This is an important uh, behavioral management causes that the algorithm gives for hyperglycemia and hyperglycemia. The uh, one for the hyperglycemia, for example, is that you don't treat your meals, you give, you don't give a bolus before the meal, or for hypoglycemia because you don't use the meal boluses. And the recommendation is phrased in a positive and non-judgmental way, underlining the motivation for following the advice. It gives an advice like this. I noticed that many for, of your heights may be avoided. Replacing your pump tube in or pod every two to three days may help to get better results. And here are some uh, the, the ones from a real world analy analysis of the uh, management behavioral tips. And it's not surprising that the most frequent behavioral recommendation for hyperglycemia was missed boluses and for hypoglycemia was blind boluses. We also ask eating provider who use the decision support system in the routine clinical uh, to, get, to indicate in their opinion the key benefits of the software of the software and interestingly most providers stated that the key benefit was that the software recommendation facilitated useful discussion with the person with diabetes and the family uh, and here is a quote from one of the physician the algorithm has been great at recognizing over treatment of lows and so many of my family just smile and say yes i do that it's been helpful and I want to do give you also a glimpse for the endo digital that it is already in clinical use in the US. And here is data, initial data from real world use, including 122 individuals from 10 pediatric clinic. As you can see, 50% of the population increased their time in range by more than 5% when using this decision support system with no increase in hypoglycemia. And we also evaluated the level of agreement over time. And in this longitudinal analysis, you can see that there was an increase in the level of agreement that might imply over time, that might imply that provider gain trust over time with the system, like in every technology that has its pace of acceptance and adoptance. So I can conclude and say that there are many expectations from decision support system uh, to improve clinical use, to use in telemedicine and so on. But I think that the most important is that it enables personalized care. And with these tools, people with diabetes and healthcare providers are not alone as as people with diabetes manage their diabetes mainly on their own, and it is the time for automatization of treatment decision. And in the future, we see that each person with diabetes will have his or own genie app, like a physician in the pocket, who accompany the patient anywhere at any time, who knows everything about him or her individual and medical care and so on and can provide and support personalized therapeutic decision in every place. And I would like to thank you all for listening and a special thanks to our team at Schneider Children Medical Center of Israel. And then I invite you all to visit. Thank you.